So the next topic we're going to talk about is how to visualize Java futures in action. As you know, I'm a big fan of, of showing visualizations of code as, as well as showing code. Well, of course, we're going to look at code too, but I sometimes think it's helpful to get that right brain holistic, holistic perspective on how the actual processes and capabilities work because otherwise you're just looking at code and code is notoriously linear in terms of how you can read it. So if you recall, a Java async invocation will return immediately with a future and then the actual call will continue to run the given computation in a background thread. So that's, that's what we talked about before. One way to do this is by using the submit method on the executor service. Executor service is a part of the executor framework in Java and it can be used to initiate asynchronous calls. What happens when you use the executor service is you first create some kind of thread pool. So as you can see in this particular case, we're gonna make a new fixed size thread pool with a certain number of threads, let's say four threads just to be concrete, but it doesn't really matter. And then we go ahead and we submit a task. And this task happens to be a two-way task, which means you are gonna pass some information in and then you're going to eventually get results back. But the actual call itself will be run asynchronously. So as you can see here, we're gonna make ourselves something called a task, which is a callable. A callable is essentially an, a functional interface defined in, initially in Java 5, where you can pass in information in the form of effectively final variables. And then you can go ahead and have that task submitted for execution by calling submit. And then what you get back from that is a future to the results. So in this particular case, we're going to pass in a task that will multiply two big fractions together. We submit that to the executor service, and then we get back a future that when the computation is done, will able to be used to redeem the results of that computation and get back the multiplied result of those two big fraction multiplications. At that point, once we've submitted the job, it goes ahead and will be queued up for execution inside the thread pool. At some point, the thread pool will execute that. As you can see here, it'll essentially go ahead and multiply those two big fractions together. And then when the asynchronous call is done, the future is completed and the result will be available. And so we can either get it by calling get, which will block. So you can say future.get, which will block the caller until you're done, or until the computation is done. Or you could also do what's called polling or timed polling, where you can give the number of seconds that you're willing to wait. You could also give a value of zero, which just says check to see if the result's there. And if it's not there, just return immediately and do some other stuff and then try again later. So that's the concept of polling and timed polling. So that's essentially an overview to how to think about visually what's going on under the hood when you use Java futures. Notice, by the way, that if we have a bunch of things we submit here, that we may get the results back in a different order than we evoked them originally. And that means you have to be prepared for that from the point of view of the client that invoked those calls. So you might say, you know, invoke, 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 invoke. So you, you submit a bunch of, of computations to run asynchronously, and then you're typically gonna have some kind of loop that sits there and checks the futures in some order. And that, of course, is the tricky aspect. What order do you check those things? So we'll come back and talk about some of the pros and cons of Java futures with respect to how easy they are to program and how efficient they are and so on. But first, let's take a closer look at some code, which is what we're gonna look at next.